And so, I eventually upgraded to DaVinci Resolve Studio, you know, which is going to be the paid version of regular DaVinci Resolve, and I have to say that it was absolutely worth the money. As somebody that switched to Resolve after having so many issues with Premiere Pro in the past, I was happy to not have to pay for a little while since DaVinci has the free version for instance, and I thought that version was already much better than Premiere Pro as it was. I have a lot of great things to say about the paid version here though, and as on the last video, I was talking about, about the free version of DaVinci Resolve versus the paid version of Premiere Pro since Premiere Pro is always the paid version. At the time around, I'm going to be comparing the paid version of both and just listing off the differences between the two and what makes the paid version of Resolve more worth it to me than Premiere Pro. So this is going to be for DaVinci Resolve Studio. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Before we continue, I just wanted to remind you that we have a Twitch channel where we stream every Friday and Saturday from 8 p.m. and to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, so why not go ahead and drop a follow? And also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and also make sure to check out the merch store. There's plenty of black and white sweetness to choose from up there, so go ahead and check that out. And then make sure to take a look at the podcast as well, as the podcast always goes live every Wednesday and Sunday. And with that said, enough rambling, let us get straight into the video. So first, let's go ahead and talk about timeline performance. This is going to be a very important factor to me, at least, as timeline performance is critical for me to work comfortably on any project. Back when I was using Premiere Pro, I was having a lot of issues with the timeline as it was very slow. I would always having to bring down the overall playback resolution and some moves could cause some random crashes. So using a stabilizer was hellish here as well. Stabilizing footage in Premiere Pro took an eternity and I hate that. That is something that I use for pretty much every video. It was awful to wait and it would randomly just not work after making you wait for let's say 10 minutes or so on maybe like a one minute clip or something like that and that's just one small example and resolve this all gets resolved pun intended for me and stabilizing is just as good if not better than it is in premieres when it does work with how footage will look at the end and it's also much faster too it takes seconds to get my footage stabilized even if it is like a full minute long and it'll give me the same quality if not better than what premiere would have offered but if you want to hear even more timeline performance is much smoother though resolve is beginning to chug a bit nowadays on me and that isn't to say that i'm using a weak computer my pc is a custom build with an 8700k that said i was going to be a core 7 with six cores and 12 threads i also have an rtx 2080 and 64 gigs of ram i should not be having so many issues with it but it is now starting to chug quite a bit on me However, Premiere Pro is way worse than that for me. Resolve is not perfect, but it is a big step up for sure as I can complete projects very easily in Resolve. Also, it's worth noting that Premiere will ask for unreasonable amounts of RAM at times when Resolve has never had a RAM issue. You can set limits for how much RAM any of these programs use, but Premiere either hits a wall after using all of my 64 gigs of RAM or will beg for more RAM if I give it any less than that. Timeline performance is more enjoyable on Resolve for sure. I don't understand why this seems to be more of a running trend with Adobe products. They just love to chew through your RAM even if you're not doing anything too intensive. It's insane. And point number two, Resolve is also just an all-in-one solution. With Adobe, you do get the entire suite like After Effects, Audition, and Premiere Pro, and so many other pieces of software to be able to get your work done, all of which are very RAM intensive and love randomly crashing, minus Audition out of the ones that I directly mentioned. I do like Audition quite a bit, in fact, and I do still use it. In fact, I'm using it right now. But Resolve has a pretty extensive effects panel built in that allows you to get very creative even if it can still get a little bit sluggish at times. It is node based which makes it easier to use for some. Though I required more practice but Premiere doesn't have these tools built in at least quite as extensively. Granted I do think that After Effects is much more powerful than Resolve's Fusion Panel but the Fusion Panel is no slouch at all either and it's built in directly into Resolve already i don't have to open a separate piece of software that is going to hog through my ram which means that i only really need that i just need davinci resolve open plus if i need to do any kind of audio editing 
I don't have to go to Audition because DaVinci Resolve already has its own audio editor built in, which is actually pretty detailed, but I do prefer to use Audition in general if I have the option. But I love that this is still here. I love that I could still do everything right here, and it has been an effective tool as well in the past. Point number three. So when it comes to stability, I already kind of talked about it in the first section, but I'll expand on that here. Premiere Pro would sometimes get stuck in this crashing loop where it would randomly crash over specific cues that wouldn't normally cause that to happen. This wasn't rare either. It would happen at least once per project, and by project, I just mean one of these little YouTube videos that really are not that work intensive or that shouldn't be that work intensive whatsoever. Nothing too crazy, but Premiere just had to do it at least once per session, otherwise it wasn't Premiere. <laughs> and when it does crash, it takes forever to finish crashing as well. It'll, it'll just take you onto this loop and it just refuses to close for a very long time. Resolve does crash every now and then, uh, but if it does crash, it just closes immediately and makes me restart it. Uh, but that happens very, very rarely, e even if it has happened multiple times over the course of my first year with this program. This is very important to me because I always crash if I haven't saved in a little while. So Premiere would always end up screwing me over like that. So it is nice to have that kind of security. And now render performance for point number four. It just tends to be a lot better here too. That's not to say that Resolve is lightning fast either, but it does have a good renderer. It's not perfect though, as if I do green screen work, sometimes it will glitch and have flashes in the final render, which is annoying. Things that you won't see in, in the actual timeline. Uh, but these aren't things that I get with Premiere and Encoder, but they can both chug quite a bit. Premiere just takes a very long time to render, and while Encoder does go faster, for sure, sometimes it just randomly freezes and it just stays in one place for no, absolutely no reason. Resolve's renderer is simple and works very well, it works pretty much every time, but it does have its issues at times as well. So it's not colossally better than Premiere here either, but it is still worth mentioning that when it comes to rendering, I've had much better luck using Resolve. And lastly, the pricing. You will never own Premiere Pro. I want to get that out of the way. You have to pay a monthly subscription for the Creative Cloud or any of the software there, and it's usually 50 bucks per month for the entire suite and $20 per month for Premiere Pro. But Resolve has a free version which I use for a little while, but if you pay the one-time fee of $300, you get updates for life and you buy it once and never worry about it again. So you do own the license to it. You have your own license key for it. Now the differences in value are difficult to argue here. Resolve is just a much better value to me, in my opinion. So yeah, I do genuinely think that Resolve is way better than Premiere Pro. I think Adobe has a lot of optimization to do regarding their video related software because there's just a lot to fix there. Now performance could definitely be better, but Resolve has addressed almost every problem that I've had with Premiere. I paid for it once and have saved so much money along the way that I can't dispute the value proposition here. I think that Blackmagic really did an amazing job developing the software over the, over the many years. And if you use and love Premiere Pro already, then definitely stick to it because this really only applies to people who are looking to switch to other software or maybe are kind of in the fence or maybe maybe want to know what software they, they should start with and have been considering the two and things like that. But if you were even slightly on the fence or aren't sure as to what uh, so what program to use? Just go with the free version of Resolve. Try it out for as long as you want and get the paid version when you decide that you need the extra features that it offers like GPU rendering and way more than that. So yeah, I do stand by that, but this is just my opinion after all. And with that said, this is pretty much the end of the argument section or the debate section per se, I guess. But if you wanted to follow us on, on our other social media like Twitch, Instagram and Twitter, then do make sure to follow me over there as I am going to have them displayed somewhere around here. And also, don't forget that we have the Tech Summit podcast where we do like to talk about tech, software, and things like that. Also, tech news. So, do make sure to stop by. All that you have to do is subscribe over here. But if you would rather listen, we do also have the audio version of each of these podcast episodes up on places like Spotify and places like Apple Podcasts. So, do make sure to check those out below if you're interested. But with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you so much for watching, and I will be seeing you all later. Enjoy.